So we have been looking at this optimal state estimation and we have arrived at this uh, stochastic state space model. Uh, here WK and VK are stochastic processes, zero mean white noise processes. Uh, classic example of a system where XK will be a correlated stochastic process. Why it is correlated? Because XK is correlated with XK minus 1, XK minus 1 is correlated with XK minus 2. By this difference equation, XK minus 2 is correlated with XK minus 3. So, there is a correlation between XK, XK minus 1, XK, XK minus 2, XK, XK minus 3. Okay. So, even though WK and VK are white noise processes, XK is not. Here we are assuming that we know characteristics of WK and VK. We know that WK is assumed to be a zero mean white noise process, VK is a zero mean white noise process. We know covariances of WK and VK. Okay. So, we know we know this. So, this is my model. Okay. Given this model, I want to come up with optimal estimates of states x. Okay. I want to come up with optimal estimates of states x in such a way that I use the information about these two noise sequences. I have this information that covariance of WK, I do not know what is the exact value of WK. Okay. See, there is a difference between these two inputs. One input is UK, UK is known input, WK is unknown input, we, have no, we do not have any measurement. Yet, we have characterization of that input in terms of a noise and in terms of mean and variance. Okay. So, we have some model for it, it is not that we are completely blind about what is happening in terms of unknown inputs. Okay. So, now how do I systematically incorporate the information of these covariances while doing state estimation? How do I optimally estimate the states? Okay. My task is following. Okay. <coughs> I want to, I want to somehow, when I do state estimation, Okay, my measurements are correlated, uh, my measurements are corrupted with noise okay. and there is an input that goes into x. I do not have a measurement of input, okay. but remember effect of wk will percolate to yk, it will percolate to yk plus 1 actually, it will percolate to, okay. so effect of, effect of the state disturbance is present in yk. Okay, and when I do state estimation, I want to somehow account for this WK because it is an input that is going to the state dynamics. Okay, I better account for it. Okay. At the same time, VK is measurement noise, it is it's complete uh, dirt in my data, I want to remove it. Okay. So, even though we call this as a noise, it is it's customary to call this as a noise, state noise and this is a measurement noise this vk is unwanted okay whereas wk you would like to have an estimate and compensate the state estimation for wk even though you don't have a measurement you would like to have an estimate okay very very important i want to compensate my state estimate for wk i want to use this i want to use this information q and r while doing so okay so q and r are some uncertainties that represent uncertainty in the input and R quantifies the uncertainty or the variability of the measurement and then uh, question is how do I design an optimal estimator that is what we are looking at. Okay. First of all WK and VK are stochastic processes and by virtue of the fact that the difference equation is driven by stochastic inputs, okay. XK is also a stochastic process. Okay. XK is a function of UK and XK is a function of UK and WK. WK is a stochastic process, then XK is also a stochastic process. There is a randomness in XK. Okay. There is randomness in XK. <coughs> okay. Then this I just talked about that you know through difference equation xk is a going to be a colored noise what is a colored noise time correlated noise 
if you try to find out auto correlation between xk and xk minus 1 xk and xk minus 2 it will be non zero auto correlation function for wk auto correlation for what is auto correlation function for white noise it is equal to covariance for lag zero and any other lag correlation is zero okay that is not going to be the case with xk xk is going to be a correlated random variable it's a stochastic process which is correlated in time and we have to uncover its characteristics okay that is one of the main thing <coughs> so what i want to do is that i want to somehow link the statistical characteristics of xk okay and rk and vk that's what i'm going to do okay that's what uh, is my next task okay now before we reach the final point okay i have to do a lot of preliminaries and uh, you have to bear with me for some time for the entire picture to become clear okay so we are i am i am creating some intermediate results keeping them aside and then i'll combine everything into you know this kalman filter development okay so <coughs> first of all i am defining this set okay i am defining this set this set is y0 u0 y1 u1 this is the set of measurements that i have collected over time i have this data with me okay i am going to call this this set as y superscript k this is not y raised to k this is just notation okay it only means that set of all data collected from time 0 to time k so if i write time k plus 1 which means data collected from time 0 to time k plus 1 if i write y superscript k minus 1 data collected from time 0 to time k minus 1 okay that is a notation okay now what i want to do is well when we are doing an observer we are going to use measurements to correct the states right i am going to use the measurements information to correct the state estimation not correct the states the true states cannot be corrected the estimate of state is going to be corrected using feedback from the measurements okay so what you can show is that uh, this <coughs> estimate of x estimate of x will be function of both wk and vk why it is function of wk because wk is affecting the state dynamics why it is a function of vk because we have a feedback correction coming in okay in the observer i have a feedback correction which is based on the measurement okay and just just imagine why entire data is required why i am saying that entire data is required entire data is required because when i estimate y x1 i am going to use information of y0 and y1 when i am going to estimate x2 i am going to use y0 y1 y2 when i estimate you know x10 i am going to use information of y0 to y9 y10 okay so measurements are going to be used to reconstruct the state estimates okay so what i want to find out is that estimate is a stochastic process estimate itself is a stochastic process differentiate between the two things the true system dynamics is also a stochastic process estimate of x is also another stochastic process these are two different things okay now we are saying that the best estimate that you can get okay best in uh, estimate that you can construct is the conditional mean that means generate conditional density of x conditioned on what condition on the measurements that you obtain okay how to generate this this looks very abstract how to generate this condition density i will work out the algebra okay so that we will be doing but if i can get this conditional density and if i take its mean that is the best estimate of the that is the best estimate of xk so somehow i want to arrive at this conditional mean okay <coughs> so i have two steps i have a prediction step and i have a correction step we are going to develop a filter kalman filter okay i have a prediction step and i have a correction step now 
what I am doing here is I am just using this difference equation just go back here I am going to use this difference equation and find out conditional means okay. Okay, <coughs> so this is the difference equation now written at time point x k. So forget about this y k minus one for the time being. Just look at this x k. Okay, is equal to phi x k minus one plus gamma u k minus one plus w k minus one. This is what this is what we have. Okay, now if I use if I use information up to y k minus 1 okay this what is the meaning of this y to the power k minus 1 all measurements up to k minus 1 have been used okay conditional density of this okay so I am going to take an expectation operator on the right hand side okay so look here phi is a matrix so I have taken it outside and I am writing expectation of x k minus 1 y k minus 1 is everyone with me on this okay plus this is a deterministic input we know what is uk we know gamma so this comes out okay so expectation of this is nothing but this itself okay it's not a stochastic variable and what about this guy expectation of wk it's a zero mean white noise what is the best value zero okay so <coughs> this is zero so which means i get a recurrence relationship i get a recurrence relationship what is the recurrence relationship? The new mean, the new conditional mean. See, this is this is estimate of x, or this is mean of x k conditioned on y k minus one. What is the meaning of this? Mean of x k conditioned on y k minus one. See, here k minus one is appearing. Okay because we used here set up to k minus 1 this is conditional mean of x up to using information up to k minus 1 is phi times conditional mean x hat k minus 1 k minus 1 plus new input that has gone in okay so what i am saying here see do you remember some time back when we talked about stochastic processes we said that for a general stochastic process the mean can be function of time this is an example okay mean is time varying okay <coughs> so this x x x k is a stochastic process whose okay and yeah last slide Yeah, because uh, there is no information of w k minus 1 ever contained in y k minus 1 because w k minus 1 will affect x k x k is in future yes x k is in future so w k minus 1 its effect will be present in y k but not in y k minus 1 so understand because of that one lag this is 0. Okay. Oh, I. Okay. See, to characterize a stochastic process, I need two measures, which are very very important: mean and variance. Okay. What does forget about this is a multivariate time varying process forget about it for the time being just one single random variable what does mean tell you most probable value right most probable value the random variable will take what does variance tell you it tells you roughly physically just do not forget that physical interpretation it tells you spread okay larger the covariance okay the possibility of x being anywhere in that band is you know you get a larger band around the mean where x can take a value smaller the covariance or smaller the variance okay x will be closer to the mean right the value of x which will actually occur 
see expected value of uh, x and actually value x will take are different x is a random variable when you say that mean is an best estimate you are estimating you are predicting okay so uh, you know that is that is what uh, given the density function that is what best you can say this is the best value you can guess okay and covariance will tell you the spread so don't forget this particular idea okay though we are going to get into more uh, complex uh, maths okay so now what i am going to do is <coughs> i want to find out now covariance i found out uh, mean and now i want to find out the covariance okay so to find out the covariance i have to subtract the mean okay i have to subtract the mean and then um, so this is my this is my mean this is how the mean changes as a function of time okay this is how mean changes as a function of time we just now found out this is the original process i am going to subtract i am going to subtract this from this okay if i subtract this from this see what will happen if i subtract this equation from this equation this gamma uk minus 1 and gamma uk minus 1 will cancel these are constants which are adding same constants being added to the both the equations so this will cancel wk minus 1 will remain okay this will remain okay so if i actually find out this difference okay i am defining this difference xk given k minus 1 so this is i am going to call it as a prediction error okay i have predicted value of x right now i have not done any correction i have not done any correction okay <laughs> and this is estimation error estimation error is xk true value of x minus estimate of x conditional estimate of x okay using information up to k minus 1 so i am getting a difference equation i am getting a difference equation that relates new error with the past error and wk okay so this this error itself is a stochastic process now we have to find out uh, you know yeah yeah x bar is nothing x hat i wrote it written as x bar because you know if i write this here you know it goes outside the slide i have practical difficulty if i write here this minus expectation of this inside this x bar is nothing but expectation of xk given yk minus 1 okay so mean i want to write mean okay conditional mean but that conditional mean if i write inside i have trouble okay <coughs> okay now i am just i am just keeping that result i am moving to the update step we will sort out how to come to the uh, covariance what is going to happen in the update step i am going to take the predicted estimate this is prediction estimate okay i am going to merge it with measurement how i am going to merge it with the measurement using a gain matrix lk okay what is how do i choose the gain matrix lk that is my design problem i want to choose gain matrix lk in some best possible way okay so that the estimate is optimal now what is this optimal that's what we will see is everyone with me on this now i'm going to fuse y i'm going to fuse y which is measurement what is this y hat k given k minus 1 estimate of y estimate of y using information up to k minus 1 how do you get this estimate c to c into x hat k given k minus 1 so uh, okay now i am writing this equation right now for some arbitrary l okay i am doing this for an arbitrary l my task is to decide l itself okay uh where what is ek ek is typically called as innovation or residual okay ek is nothing but yk minus y hat k given k minus 1 okay 
what is yk yk is cxk plus vk okay so this is cxk minus cx at k given k minus 1 which is nothing but c epsilon k given k minus 1 plus vk okay what you can appreciate here is that these estimates now are going to be functions of wk and vk why it is going to be function of wk wk effect is present in yk wk effect is present in yk isn't it effect of wk wk is a some noise entering you know the real plant so its effect is present in yk okay vk is yeah huh? wk minus 1 effect will be present in wk minus 1 w effect what i mean to say is disturbance effect will be present in yk past disturbances effect will be present in yk okay <coughs> okay so now what i have done here is i have written this i have written this x hat k given k is x hat k given k minus 1 plus l k e k but e k is nothing but c epsilon k plus v k so i have derived a combined expression this is just an algebra okay if you have notes just look at it it's just an algebra i have just derived a combined expression which is combining this step okay uh, with the so now what do you have at the end of this at the end of this we have two different equations just look here what we had in the last in the last equation in the last equation this equation was relating uh, error k minus 1 k minus 1 to k k minus 1 okay and in the next equation okay i have i have relationship between k k minus 1 to k k okay so i have found out difference equations i have found out difference equations between successive errors okay how the errors are governed by is this okay everyone with me on this yeah okay <coughs> so now i want to find out mean value of the error what is the mean value of the error okay so now my error dynamics together i have written these two equations together i have these two equations these two are coupled equations you see this k minus 1 k minus 1 gives me k k minus 1 k k minus 1 gives me k k okay k k will be used in at time k plus 1 k and then that will give you k plus 1 k plus 1 and so on okay so everything depends upon everything depends upon epsilon 0 0 if you know epsilon 0 0 okay you will know epsilon 1 0 if you know epsilon 1 0 you will know yeah epsilon 1 1 if you know epsilon 1 1 you will know epsilon 2 1 and you can start rolling okay you can start rolling so i have just combined this and i am writing now k i have just combined these two equations just substituted this and this okay so now our equation between k k as a function of k minus 1 k minus 1 fine just an algebra pure algebra nothing okay now here is a simplifying assumption okay what i am saying here is that expected value of x not expected value of x not see when you <laughs> this is a tricky thing okay and uh, uh, expected value of the true value at time 0 okay see i have to give an initial guess right to start the difference equation i have to give an initial guess 
how do i give initial guess so when i give a guess i am it's a random variable i am guessing okay i have to create a random variable okay i am making an assumption that the guess comes from the same distribution the guess comes from the same distribution as the two distribution they have same mean okay so so x0 is a random variable initial guess that i give is a random variable okay but both of them have same mean okay what does it what does it mean and then the covariance of covariance of you know both of both of, both their covariances are also equal so i am just saying that you know uh, the initial guess is a random variable whose mean is same as the true mean okay whose variance is also same as the true variance this is my simplifying assumption this is my simplifying assumption okay yeah we don't know we don't know. <laughs> there is a problem so but see the uh, just assume this for the time being and see uh, beauty of this algorithm i mean this is a something like this algorithm has you can say change the world okay so uh, and see main thing in uh, uh, you know in science or in mathematics is to make right assumptions simplifying assumptions okay uh, if you are able to make right simplifying assumptions you know because when you model there is always a disconnect between the reality and the model okay so you should know where to draw the boundary if you know that boundary then you are there okay so so i am assuming see what i am assuming is that expected value of the initial error is zero okay now what is the consequence of this assumption just see what is the consequence of this assumption what is e11 see i am going to use this difference equation now i am going to just use this difference equation together with this assumption what is the assumption expected value of the initial error is zero i am not saying initial error is zero i am saying expected value of the initial error mean of the initial error so i have guessed okay and uh, error that you have committed okay if you if all of you guess okay and if you take mean of those guesses okay then the mean will be same or the mean of the error will be zero that's what i'm saying yeah x0 is a true state why x0 is a stochastic variable x see x is a stochastic process see time zero is some arbitrary time right let's say it has let it, let's say it has started at some time minus infinity see we are taking some arbitrary zero time and then starting okay see you are in a uh, imaginary world in which the stochastic process has started at some time minus infinity when the universe started okay and so now today you decided to start doing the calculations so x0 is arbitrarily fixed to today but something has happened in the past right okay see suppose sup let's 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 take an example real example you know x is the temperature in this room okay and k is you know uh, that is a uh, day you know k minus 1 is yesterday k plus 1 is tomorrow k plus 2 is day after tomorrow okay so i decide something i decide to start doing calculations using today so today is my zero okay so x0 that is a true state today is actually function of all the randomness in the past okay so so what is x now is a x is a stochastic process where i place zero is my choice okay so something has been happening before before time zero okay all that information is contained in x0 okay i decided to use equation from today so i'll start using it x k plus 1 is tomorrow x k plus 2 is day after tomorrow okay but 
past history is there in x naught right and it's a random variable okay it's a coordinate random variable we are assuming that we have some information about it through p naught we know in some sense we are we are saying that we know its mean value okay there are different ways of interpreting this equation different books you will find different interpretations uh, okay so i am going to start using this equation rolling in time okay so now what is expected value of e11 expected value of e11 will be i minus l0 here i minus l0 c into expected value of phi into e00 okay plus w0 what is expected value of e00 our assumption is that it is 0 okay what is expected value of w0 0 what is expected value of v1 0 it is a white noise okay so what is e22 see e22 will depend upon e11 but e11 is 0 okay so yeah so what you can show is that if you make that assumption okay that initial error has zero mean okay if you make an assumption that initial error has zero mean then all subsequent errors also have zero mean okay so this is called as unbiased estimator okay expected value yeah e00 is not equal to 0 expected value of e00 is 0 most likely no i am not saying that i am saying that there is going to be an initial error but that error is random error whose uh, you know distribution has characteristic that is mean is 0 and covariance something so actually actual value of the error at time 0 will be drawn from that distribution actual value is different from the expected value yes that is an assumption that is a simplifying assumption okay so way to think about it is that suppose i tell all of you okay see uh, i tell you that actually x not comes from a gaussian distribution okay and there is a method to draw a sample from the gaussian distribution okay matlab will give you a sample if you ask for a sample from gaussian distribution of certain mean certain covariance it will give you a sample okay i tell each one of you to generate one sample okay and i subtract it from the true value i know the true value and i have given you the distribution you generate a sample okay then i will find out the mean of each one of them and take sorry i take a difference of each one of you know your your sample his sample her sample her sample i take difference between the true value which i know and the samples which you have given me okay then i got all possible e zero zeros okay see i asked you to guess temperature in this room okay i know the true value you can guess okay each one of you will give a guess then i will find an error okay now you have you have uh, given me a guess and if i take a mean of all the possible error values between the true which i know and the guess which you have given that mean is zero that's what i am saying is that clear okay is everyone with me on this up to here okay so this error its mean value is zero okay its mean value is zero now so i found out the mean of the error what is the meaning of mean of the error is zero so i am saying that epsilon k k is x k minus 
x hat k given k right this is what is our definition that is x k minus expected value of x k conditioned on y k right. So, I am saying that expected value of epsilon k given k is equal to 0. That is what I proved under the assumption which I made. Okay. How did I prove this? I could prove this using difference equation together with the assumption that expected value of E 0 0 is equal to 0. This together with the difference equation follows right is that okay okay now i am just going to interpret this so expected value of xk minus expected value of xk given yk is equal to 0 right 0 vector 0 vector this is nothing but epsilon k right fine okay or this also implies that expected value of xk is equal to expected value of Okay. So, conditional mean is going to be an unbiased estimate of x. There is no some constant coming up. Okay. There is no some constant coming up. Expected value of xk is same as conditional expectation of xk. Conditioned on the measurements. Expected value of xk. xk is a random variable. Okay, conditioned expectation of xk is also another random variable. I am saying and I am showing an equivalence. Uh, uh, what I would uh, say is that uh, don't expect that you will uh, understand everything in one shot. Okay, so uh, things will sleep in seep in slowly. Okay, so uh, at some point you will have to accept and proceed, and then. Uh, yeah, but what is expectation? Expectation is a already a uh, expectation of expectation is the same value. Expectation is a is a is a deterministic quantity. Expectation of a value is a deterministic quantity. Huh? Expectation. Once you have found an expectation, it's a deterministic value. Just think about it. It's. In other, I am just saying that estimate is a random variable, truth is a random variable, both have same means. The way I am constructing estimate, the mean, the estimate, see what, what, what this says is that conditional expectation of x is same as the true expectation of x. So, it is fine to find out conditional expectation of x. If I want a mean value of x, I could as well find the conditional expectation of x. Okay, I am just showing the equivalence between the two. Okay. Say it again. I am not following what you are saying. Okay, let us let us discuss it later. Uh, see if it becomes clear. If it does not become clear, you ask again. Okay. So, now to find out covariance, what do you do? I am going to find out what is the expected value of this quantity 0. Okay. Expectation of E k is 0, right? E k k is 0, E k given k minus 1 is also 0. Okay. Both of them are 0 because they are 
if one is zero the other is zero because they are related through algebra see see we showed that expected value of ek expected value of ekk is zero and by this correlation expected value of k given k minus 1 is also 0 both the errors have expected value 0 okay so now i am going to use this to find out covariance so i am defining this covariance matrix see how covariance matrix is defined covariance matrix is defined as expectation of as expectation of uh, k k minus 1 k k minus 1 transpose epsilon k why mean is not appearing here because they are 0 mean both the errors are 0 mean okay so i just have to take epsilon k k minus 1 into epsilon k k minus 1 transpose and here okay now <coughs> i am going to derive a recurrence relationship between the two okay this is a stochastic process i am going to develop a recurrence relationship so uh, I just use the difference equation. I just use a difference equation. K k minus one, k k minus one transpose is same as phi k minus one, k minus one w k into this whole thing into transpose. Right? Simple algebra. I am just multiplying left hand side, multiplying right hand side. Okay? And then I am going to take an expectation. I want to take this expectation here. Okay? So I am going to take an expectation. Now just think about this. W k minus one, W k minus one, and error k minus one, k minus one are not correlated. Just go back and look at. That's why I wanted to have an equation. I cannot keep going back in the slides. Just have a look at. If you have the printout, just have a look at the equations. I uh, these two W k minus one and epsilon k minus one, k minus one, they are not correlated. So expected value of this quantity is zero. And from this it follows, you get this recurrence relationship. Okay, very very simple derivation. You just do multiplication. You just do multiplication of these quantities. These are vector and matrix quantities, so you have to be very careful when you uh, take transpose and all that. Okay, if you take transpose and take expectation, you will get this recurrence relationship. That is predicted covariance. Okay, is phi times is phi times updated covariance. This is called updated covariance. This is called predicted covariance. Updated covariance at k minus one. Okay, plus covariance of W k. Why will why why is this Q term coming here? Because you will have W k. You will have W k W k transpose. Okay, see what are the terms that you will get when you do this multiplication? Just just go back here. You will get phi. You will phi phi. You will get phi phi transpose. Okay. Then you will get term between, you know, epsilon into w. You will get two terms between epsilon and w. And then you will get one term between w w transpose. So there are four terms. Okay. Out of which two terms cancel. Only two terms remain. So which two terms cancel? By virtue of the fact that w k minus one and Error at k minus one, k minus one are uncorrelated. We get this recurrence relationship. Yeah. E k, ha. Huh. P k k minus one is the covariance of the prediction error. So this is covariance of the prediction error. This is covariance of the estimation error. Okay. This is a this is a recurrence relationship. Okay, just like for the mean, I found a recurrence relationship. Previous mean is correlated to the new mean. Okay, same way, I am finding a recurrence relationship between. <coughs> I am finding a recurrence relationship between the covariances. So I have characterized the stochastic process in terms of mean and covariances. Okay, I now have to do one more step. Okay. <coughs> okay. Now look here. Uh, what is what is E K? 
E k is y k minus innovation. Okay. So this is c epsilon k k minus one plus v k. Okay. What is the mean value of E k? You take expectation of E k. What will you get? Huh? You will get zero. Why do you get zero? See, because I have shown that error y k minus y hat k minus one is a function of w k minus one. That's what you wanted to know. It's also a function of v k. See, I'm just doing substitutions. I'm substituting for epsilon k given k minus one. Look at your slides, previous slide. Okay. Now, if I take an expectation of e k, it will be c phi into expectation of this quantity. Expectation of this quantity is zero. Expectation of w k minus one is zero, and expectation of v k is zero. Okay. So. <coughs> So actually what I want to do is I want to so first thing that I want to convey here is that this E k it contains information about the disturbances but it also contains V k. So we want to now separate out we want to separate out information about V k and W k somehow try to compensate the estimate of the state using information for W k minus 1. I want to construct an estimate of W k minus one using E k, and that's what actually you are doing when you when you are putting this L k times. When you are doing this, you are actually constructing an estimate of W k, and then you are you are actually correcting it here. This is an interpretation. Okay, why am I doing this correction? See, this is the correction step. The predict the corrected estimate is equal to prediction estimate plus correction. This correction is the gain times e k. Okay, this correction is gain times e k. E k contains the information of w k minus one. Okay, but it also contains v k. So I want to multiply it by a factor. What is the role of this factor? This factor will help you to correct for w k minus one. It will try to filter out v k. Okay, this is an interpretation which I am giving for what we are doing. Okay, now how do I decide? How do I decide l k? Is the golden question. We haven't answered that yet. That is what is going to be my next task. Okay. So what is the expected value of e k? Expected value of e k is zero. I, what is? Can you find out covariance? Just do it. Find out covariance of E k. Just do it. Tell me what is covariance of E k. There should be some little break in between. Yeah, yeah. Which one? Huh? Huh? Yeah. Huh? So it is estimate of noise at the previous instant using information up to. Current instant. Okay, uh, so there are three things in estimation. Okay, one is called as prediction estimate. K given k minus one is a prediction estimate. K given k is the current estimate or filtered estimate. That is called filtered estimate. And you know uh, when you are estimating something in the past using information in up to future, that is called as Smooth estimate. Okay, see, I have collected. It's it's like saying, you know, uh, you collected data of temperature in this room, starting from say first uh, of January till today. You have time series. You collected data. Now you have a model, and I ask you to do prediction of what is an estimate of temperature tomorrow. That is prediction estimate. Okay. Second thing is, I'll ask you that do an estimate of temperature of today using measurement up to today. Okay. That is our x k k. See here, what is x k k? Is estimate of today's temperature using information up to today. Okay. 
I can also pose the question. Ultimately, we are just estimating. So I can say what is the best estimate of yesterday's temperature using information up to today, right? I can have that. Or what is the what is the best estimate of temperature three days back using information up to today? That is called as if you can consider that estimate, you can consider that estimate, and that is called as a smooth estimate. Okay, so you can. Now you have collected more information. See, ultimately, when you generated x k k, when you generated x k k, it is an estimate ultimately. Okay, so if you have more information, you can improve upon the estimate. Okay, so smooth estimates are constructed. Smoothing is done. Okay. <coughs> okay, just do this. Find out what covariance of this e k. What is covariance of ek? You express it in terms of find out covariance of ek in terms of covariance of epsilon k given k minus one. What will it be? C p k given k minus one, C transpose plus r. See what you will you get is like this. I am calling this PE and EK EK transpose is C this plus this whole quantity into the bracket transpose. I am taking expectation of this, so you'll get C. Now this error and VK are uncorrelated. This error and VK are uncorrelated. So cross covariance between epsilon K given K minus one and VK is zero, and then that gives me this. Relationship, okay. <coughs> okay. Each of the quantities, stochastic quantities, I have three stochastic quantities that I have to worry about. One is epsilon k k minus one. Other one is epsilon k k, and the third one is e k. Okay. Third one is e k. So for all three of them, I want to find out mean and covariance. Okay, this is my preparation going on. Okay, we will derive the uh, observer after this. So uh, I am finding out now estimation error. First, I will find out its varia, its mean value. Now, since I know mean of this and I know mean of this, I can use it, use this relationship and find out mean of this. Why I am doing this afterwards is because I have to go sequentially. Okay, these are coupled equations, and then I have to go one after another. Okay, and then I find out uh, covariance of uh, k k. Okay, is everyone with me on this? I am just finding out covariance of this quantity, and covariance of this quantity will turn out to be if you just do the algebra, it will turn out to be uh, now now. Here there are some cross covariance terms that are coming up, which I cannot neglect. Okay. Uh, so, so if I do the algebra, you will have, we'll have to sit and work out this little bit of algebra. If you do this little bit of algebra, you will get this equation, which says that new covariance is that is updated covariance is predicted covariance. Plus L K uh, P E P E is covariance of E itself, and this is cross covariance between E and epsilon. Okay. So what it tells you, what does this equation tell you? That the new covariance, updated covariance, is going to be function of L K. How do you choose L K? Will decide what is P K. Given k, okay. Now forget about the algebra. What does covariance tell you? Spread. Covariance tell you spread. How? What kind of estimate that I want? Spread should be maximum, minimum, small, large. What do you say? As small as possible. Okay. I want to choose L k. I want to choose L k such that this covariance, predicted covariance. Is as small as possible. 
ओके कमिंग अप टू दिस पॉइंट इज जस्ट अलजिब्रा यू सिट डाउन विद दिस इक्वेशन पेशेंटली डू द अलजिब्रा यू विल गेट दिस इक्वेशन आई हैव गिवन ऑल इंटरमीडिएट स्टेप्स ओके इट्स इट्स नथिंग दे लुक लिटिल कॉम्प्लेक्स बट यू नो जस्ट डूइंग पेशेंटली डूइंग द अलजिब्रा एंड यू विल गेट दीज एक्सप्रेशन ओके No, no. See, there are. This equation is there, right? K K K minus one into L K E K. So you need to know both about E K and L K. See, why did I derive here P E here? Because I am going to get a term when I do epsilon K epsilon K transpose. I will get a term which is E K E K transpose. I should be ready for that. That's why I have done this preparation. Which one? Which one? Huh? Slide fifteen. There can be a typo, but which one? You can derive it. See here. Oh, this one. uh one minute no no but i did i substitute for yk there uh This equation, right? Talking about this equation. Okay. So have I made an error here? Let me check. Oh yeah, there is a. Okay, the way I derive this equation is simply by subtracting. Uh, so you start with this equation. You start with this equation. Uh, yeah, so I have just written this equation. That is epsilon k minus one. oh here it should be k minus 1 k minus 1 right okay okay this equation you are talking about this equation huh no no see these two are same these two are same equations see i can choose to use this equation or this equation see here what i have done is i have expanded ek and just written vk here okay these two are one and the same equations here ek is written 
in terms of c epsilon k given k minus 1 plus v k then you get this equation okay but you can choose to work directly with this equation no so see there is lot of algebraic tricks involved in this okay so this equation and this equation are identical actually they are not different equations okay so i could i could have proceeded using this equation i could have proceeded using this equation i have decided to proceed using this equation okay so they are not different yeah thanks for uh, pointing out yeah fine there are two different there are two different expressions for the same thing they are interconvertible huh okay is so is this fine up to here last equation okay now what i want to do is i want to de devise a minimum variance controller i want a i want not minimum variance controller i want to devise a minimum variance estimator i want to find out that gain lk which gives me smallest possible variance in the estimate of x okay i want to find out that gain lk which gives me smallest possible now what is the relationship between the predict corrected covariance updated covariance and the gain lk that is given here okay i want to choose lk in such a way that this is as small as possible now this is a matrix what is the smallest what is the matrix as small as possible is this a is this a is this a special matrix is this a matrix which is positive definite is covariance always a positive definite matrix why is this matrix a positive definite matrix just look at the terms is this a positive definite matrix covariance covariance matrix just go back and look at the derivation initial covariance covariance matrix p not is always positive definite if p not is positive definite you can show that p1 is positive definite if p1 is positive definite p10 is positive definite if p10 is positive definite you can show that p11 is positive definite and it follows that all these are sequences of positive definite matrices okay covariance covariance is always a positive definite matrix it could be positive semi definite but it can never be negative definite it's a positive definite matrix huh ha so now now uh, it depends upon how we choose this lk so question is how do i choose lk and maintain the positive definiteness of pkk okay so now what i'm going to do is i want to find out estimation find out the gain matrix lk such that estimation error has minimum variance so i need some i need some uh you know scalar quantity which defines the volume of this matrix i want to talk about large matrix small matrix okay let's assume that this is a diagonal matrix if the diagonal entries are large covariance is large if diagonal entries are small covariance is small okay if this is a diagonal matrix and it is a positive definite matrix all the elements will be positive okay so trace what is trace some of the and also are there some relations with the eigen values some of the eigen values some of the eigen values of a what is eigen values of a positive definite matrix are they always positive they are positive okay so minimizing variance turns out to be equivalent to minimizing trace of this matrix okay how do you minimize a function with respect to some what is the necessary condition the necessary condition for optimality is derivative with respect to the 
objective function set equal to 0. So now what I need to do is to differentiate trace of pkk with respect to lk and set it equal to 0 then I will get the solution okay then I will get the solution. So uh, once you, you I, I want you guys uh, uh, well guys and girls to go back and do this algebra at home it is not uh, just do not listen to this lecture just go back and try to derive these things okay. First of all uh, now I need some intermediate result first of all you have to understand that trace of C plus D is same as trace of C plus A plus D and trace of C is same as trace of C transpose okay. See why I need this because now what I am going to do is I am going to take trace of PKK which is trace of this whole quantity on the right hand side okay. So trace of this is sum of trace of this plus trace of this plus trace of this plus trace of this that is one thing okay and sum of the other quantity is see if you look at this and this this matrix is transpose of this matrix but the traces are equal okay so I am going to use that I am going to use that so I need this relationship okay next thing I need is how to differentiate how to differentiate a scalar function of a matrix with respect to the matrix itself. see what I am doing x is a matrix okay right now uh, well I should not have used x x is now not the state here I am writing a result mathematical result as a side uh, thing okay x is some matrix and y is some scalar function of this matrix then what is dou y by dou x that is defined like this okay. Uh, I should have used some other notation x is not a great thing x do not confuse on this particular slide x does not represent the state it is just a uh, algebraic result which I am writing on the side okay. Now there are some rules of differentiation okay of a scalar function of a matrix with respect to the matrix itself okay. So trace of a times x do trace of a times x by do x x is a matrix is a transpose you can prove these results with tedious algebra you can prove these results okay use this definition uh, take a x and then meticulously write down I tried it it works out okay. <laughs> so uh, there are also results for x transpose b x b x b x transpose why do I need all this look here. I have a term which is matrix L this into L transpose so I need to differentiate this term I need to differentiate this term right I need to differentiate these two terms what is derivative of this with respect to LK yes you said it 0 see PK given K minus 1 does not depend upon LK only these three terms depend so I have to differentiate this term. I have to differentiate this term, I have to differentiate this term okay. To differentiate these three terms I need, I need these two results, these two are algebraic results one is you know when you differentiate trace of Ax or Xa with respect to X you will get A transpose, when you differentiate Xb X transpose with respect to X you will get 2Xb okay this is just algebra the final result looks exactly same as scalar differentiation except here you will get a transpose okay otherwise it looks almost you know close to I am going to use this and differentiate okay uh, I, I have to differentiate first this term I have to differentiate this term I get 2 L K P E okay I have to differentiate this term I will differentiate this term and from this oh, I will get uh, I will get 2 here
Is everyone with me on this two results? Is it okay? This time using that algebra which I showed you, differentiating a scalar function of a matrix with respect to a matrix. What is the matrix here? L. Okay. I am differentiating P K K with respect to L K. I will. So finally, when I do this, when I do this, I will get this result. Okay. So what is the optimal gain? Optimal gain is this L star, which is P epsilon E K into P E E inverse. Okay. This is my optimal gain. If I use this value of gain, I will get smallest possible variance P K even K. Okay, this was the fundamental. This is the seminal result put by Kalman. Uh, and then, what is the optimum covariance? Optimum covariance turns out to be this. Smallest covariance. This is the smallest covariance that you can get. You cannot reduce covariance below this. Okay, so this is the optimal estimator. Okay, this is the optimal estimator. Okay, and <coughs> so let me summarize Kalman filter. This is my prediction step, and then I do prediction of the covariance. See, I am working with the stochastic process. I have to keep updating mean covariance, mean covariance. Okay, so prediction step is this. So this is this is predicted mean. This is predicted covariance. Okay. Kalman gain computation is you know this p epsilon e into p e inverse. We have computed these terms earlier and kept them aside. I am just substituting them here. Okay, we have done these calculations earlier. Just look at the slides. We have done these calculations. So this is how you compute the Kalman gain. So if you know if you know p k given k minus one, you can compute Kalman gain. And if you know phi, if you know r, and if you know q. So what I have achieved? See, I started by saying I want to derive the gain by systematically using Stochastic information about W and V. I have done that. My gain calculation is based on Q and R. How it is defended? Depending upon Q through P K given K minus one is appearing here. P K given K minus one is function of Q. Okay, and L K is a function of R. Okay, so I have systematically used Q and R information to find out. So this is the celebrated Kalman filter. I do an update, and then I update updated covariance. Okay, this is updated mean, updated covariance. So you start with the initial guess x zero zero, and this is the recursive procedure by which you construct subsequent optimal estimates. For linear time invariant system, these are the estimates which give you minimum covariance. Okay, there is no better estimator you can construct. There are a lot of properties. I mean, this particular development in 1964 or 65, uh, about the time I was born, you know, guess gave rise to a flurry of results. I mean, it has resulted into a huge number of things that you just don't know what what all things that we use this. This uh, thing is used in, as I said, image reconstruction. It's used in, uh, you know, uh, underwater drilling. It is used in. See, you have a problem uh, in oil well drilling. You have some measurements coming from the, uh, you know, that the drill has some measuring instruments. Okay, it will measure some humidity and some some other things there. I don't know what exactly it measures, but then and then you have a model for the reservoir. Okay, and from those measurements, you you, you construct the states. What is the state? What is the size of the reservoir down there? Okay, what is uh, you know how soft is material on this side and how soft is material on that side? You can estimate. You have to you have a model. You have data coming. You fuse data in the model. That's what you are doing here. See, this is my this is my model based estimate. My data y is coming here. This is my predicted estimate. I am fusing data with the model in this. Okay, a wonderful algorithm. Why this is wonderful? Because it is recursive. So when Gauss Initially worked out on least square estimation. He worked out on a batch of data. 
okay batch of data is not it's a brilliant solution but you know in a computer control system where data is continuously coming data size keeps increasing you cannot work with batch of data you need a recursive solution so this is a recursive solution old estimate plus a correction gives me a new estimate so that was something which was landmark because this could be used in a computer okay it just says that updated mean is 5 times the previous mean plus this and uh, corrected mean is updated predicted mean sorry this is uh, not updated this is predicted mean and corrected mean is uh, predicted mean plus a correction correction is based on y minus y hat okay very very powerful algorithm which so now uh, we will look at its interpretations and all kinds of things in the next lecture um, and what I will show you is that every time there is a covariance reduction so every time you are getting a better and better estimate and so on. Okay.